Well, today I had a question from one of my students with regards to the 11 different types of people. And what type of people should you take in an organization and what type of people you should get rid of? Now, if you have watched my videos, previous videos, there are 11 different types or kinds of people that you will find. Now, if you are a leader, and if you want to bring someone into your department or organization, you got to be very, very careful about not bringing the type of people that I'm going to explain right now. Number one, you should not be getting anyone who is a sleeper. Now, what do you mean by sleeper? Sleeper doesn't mean that you sleep on the couch. That's not what I mean. A sleeper is someone who is not aware of what is happening around the world. A sleeper is someone who does not know what's happening in the industry. A sleeper is someone who does not know what's happening in that particular organization. And a sleeper is someone who does not know what is happening in the department. He's called a sleeper or she's called a sleeper. For example, if you are having a meeting, one-on-one -on -one meeting with someone, a staff member, and if that person says that I didn't know about it, that's an example of sleeper. Now, if you keep on getting this type of answer that I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know, that means this person is number one, not aware of what's happening, and number two, is not interested or keen to learn. So therefore, you should be very careful about it, and you should be able to coach this person that he has to take responsibility and he is accountable to ensure to update himself with what is happening either in the industry, in the organization or in the departmental level. So the first person that you should be careful of is a dreamer. The second type of people that you should be very careful of is the blamer. Who is a blamer? From the name itself, it's very clear. These are people who keep on blaming. They blame about they blame about their parents, they blame about their teachers, they blame about the system, they blame about the weather condition, they blame about the traffic, they blame about everything. Everything. So if a person is coming to you and blaming about something else, and there is no solid evidence that that he can stand or she can stand, then always understand that's just a blame and it's not true. And if a person is blaming about something else or somebody else to you, that person is going to blame about you to somebody else as soon as you turn. So it's not a good idea to have people like that. So if you find someone who is a blamer, as a leader, it is your responsibility to ensure to have a conversation, an open dialogue with this person, to understand what is the root cause of it, and you should also make them aware not to bring any sort of negative thoughts or negative conversation within the department. Because you need to understand that one single person can spoil the entire soup. He can spoil the, or she can spoil the entire department, the environment that you have created based on your culture. So number two, the second type of people that you should be very careful about is the blamer. The third type of people is called the procrastinators. They agree to do something, but they don't do it. Is it good to be a procrastinator? Absolutely no. Therefore, whenever you have a dialogue with your team members and they promise to do something or get something done within a particular date and they keep on prolonging and they don't come to you and then at the final day, they give you a surprise saying that I didn't start yet or I didn't get that or this from the other department or we have the lack of resources. That means this person is procrastinating on that particular task which you have given to him or her. Is it good to have that type of people in the organization? The answer is no. So what you have to do is you need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that person. If you've got a pro professional coach, then you should be doing a coaching with this person to ensure that next time he or she does everything. If not, you got to ask him or her, is there any other department that you like to work? based on his passion or her passion. There are people who would be in the wrong department. For example, if you are into the finance department or in the sales department and you have got somebody who is not good at sales and, and he does not have the passion to sell, that's the wrong person. He may procrastinate because you will ask him or her to go and approach a client or make a call and he would or she would procrastinate because that is not aligned with his passion or her passion. 
In that case, you have taken the wrong person in the wrong seat in the wrong department. Therefore, you got to have a one-on-one -on -one chat or one-on-one -on -one dialogue with this person to ensure what is his passion or her passion. And based on the passion, you should be able to shift or shuffle the department. Maybe this person is good at finance, so he goes to the finance department. So number three is pro procrastinators. So we started with number one is the sleepers, number two, the blamers, and number three, the procrastinators. The fourth type of people that you should be a bit careful about is the player. Who is a player? A player is someone who is there in the ground, who is there in the ground but is not visible. They are very average or below average. They are mediocres. They're not challengers. They don't come forward. They don't show themselves in the limelight and so forth. They just survive. They may be with the company for many years. That's good. They may be loyal to the company, but they don't grow. And if they don't grow, the department doesn't grow. And if the department doesn't grow, the organization doesn't grow. So it's all interconnected and interlinked. And if you have somebody in your organization who is just playing very safe, these people, they play not to win, but they play not to lose. They play not to lose. So they want to be on the safe side, on the safe seat, in the safe position. So if you find somebody like that, you should be able to have a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with this person. And number two, you should also see how you can uplift this person uh, to, by giving coaching or mentoring and, and motivating them to move forward. Again, just like in the case of uh, procrastinators, if you find that this person is in the wrong seat in the wrong department, then you should ask them what is the best seat or best position they would like in some other department. And you should be able to shuffle them to the next department. Next one is called the perfectionist. And this is something that you very often find in people, being perfect. I learned about this one many years back when I was attending a training program with uh, my boss. Uh, his name is Tom Craig from Australia. And that's when I, I realized that I was perfectionist and I should not be that. That was the eye opening for me. And after that, I have always focused on being excellent rather than being perfect. Now, a procrastinator would never begin or never start. Similarly, a perfectionist would never end. Is it good? The answer is no. If you do not finish your project on time, or if you do not start your project on time, it's going to end up in delay. And delay results in many things. It would bring your brand image down. It could delay many other things. For example, you may lose the market share. You may lose to win. There are a lot of things that could happen just because of delay and delay is caused by two reasons. Number one, procrastination and number two, being perfectionist. So these are the people that you should avoid in an organization and it's not possible to identify these people within a month or two. It takes time. You should be giving a probation period for sure. And during the probation period, sometimes they may be good. So you should be giving some extension time to understand these people. Well, what I spoke right now is also included in our program, which is called the LEAP program, Leadership Empowerment and Presentation Mastery program. If you want to become a better leader, move from the leadership role that you are here right now and to become a better and a great leader, then I welcome you to the LEAP program. To know much more about the program, you'll find the website. You can just visit our website and you can have a chat with me. And let's see whether you are fit for the program and whether we are fit for you to take you to the next level. See you there. Thank you.